Hi, welcome to the Phone Arena video review of the Sony Ericsson Live View. This little device here, which is a continuation of the Bluetooth watch line that Sony Ericsson have, um, taking a lot of the technologies from it, but adding a lot of other functionality and ultimately offering more than a watch. In the box, they really do reiterate this point by including it not with a watch strap only, but a clip-on accessory as well, allowing you to clip the device onto notepads, etc. In fact, the device is clipped on to this from the get-go, just to encourage people to appreciate the multiple uses of the live view. What you also have on the device is a 3.5cm AMOLED screen with four touch-sensitive strips, up top and bottom and left and right. At the top of the device are two physical keys, giving it an almost stopwatch-esque look and feel, and on the bottom is a micro USB port. This is used for charging, as we haven't come across any uses to connect the device to a PC, um, to a computer, sorry, um, via the micro USB port. Take off the clip at the back, and we can attach the watch strap. As far as the design goes, whoops, the watch strap is Velcro, and so it doesn't feel as hardy as the metal straps on the MBW line, for example, and certainly doesn't look as crisp and sharp. Nevertheless, it's pretty functional. So, as you can see, we can just attach it on without too much hassle, and it can sit comfortably on the wrist for uh, the duration of the day. In terms of comfort, it certainly doesn't feel like an inconvenience, and the device itself isn't too big. However, there are other issues we had with the design of the watch strap. The first issue we had with the watch strap and using the Sony Ericsson Live View as a watch is that when the screen switches off um, or hibernates, you have to press a button to activate the time. This isn't a huge issue, but can just be annoying if you wanted to get the Live View to replace your primary watch. Now, the main issue we had with using the Live View as a watch is the fact that when you're taking a jacket off or something, you can actually end up popping the live view out of the so um, its holder on the Velcro strap. This can result in the live view being on the floor or um, anywhere really in a club or in an environment where people could tread on it. Um, and it really is a shame because this would be the biggest deterrent for us for getting the live view as a primary watch fun um, as far as design goes. One additional point to note is the requirement for a Bluetooth de um, Android device to um, make the watch tell the correct time. Every time we reset the live view, we're displayed, um, it displays 0000. And again, unless you have your phone on you to resync it, you're not going to be able to get the time on it. So these three reasons really mean if you do get the live view and do intend it to be a primary watch, Bear in mind the limitations behind that. Overall, however, the design is a mix of good and bad, with ingenuitive functionality thanks to the clip and the size of the live view and the fact it comes off the watch strap. But the niggles that we already mentioned, you just may want to really think about it before you get the live view as a watch. As far as the other functions go, we're going to take a closer look at them now. By default, the Sony Ericsson Live View displays the time in the day. As you can see, I've pressed the right hand button and you get access to the rest of its features, including text messages, Facebook updates, Twitter updates, plugins, Find Phone, RSS, Calendar, Missed Calls, and all events. The ones which work very well include text message updates and Missed Call alerts, as well as the RSS and Twitter reader. Um, in addition to that, the music player worked pretty well as well, however can be a little bit fiddly until you get used to it. Once you do, however, it's extremely reliable. The main issues we had with the device were that the Facebook um, plugin wouldn't work, uh, which was annoying. If we found this issue, we're sure some of you might as well. In addition, when you download other plugins, they're really hit and miss. This isn't Sony Ericsson's fault, but the weather plugin, for example, really just doesn't do anything on our device, 
and the Gmail plugin ended up making our phone um, our live view vibrate to the point that it ran out of battery. However, 90% of the time the Gmail plugin worked pretty well, and there are other very good plugins um, such as the Mode plugin, which is extremely simple but lets you change the profile of your handset via the live view when it's on your wrist for example, which can be priceless. Our main issue with the device overall is connectivity. We found that connection dropped between the live view and the device um, pretty often, and reconnecting isn't as straightforward as it perhaps could be. Thanks to the live view app, the reconnecting has to go through that, and not your standard Bluetooth um, app in the Android um, interface, which we would have actually preferred. As far as the uh, compatibility of the Live View goes, it should work with any device with Android 2.1 up. We had it to test with the Sony Ericsson Xperia X10 and with the Dell Streak running 2.2, the prior running 2.1, and found that performance was very similar across the board between both of them. However, you may want to check forums for your specific device before getting the Live View, as there have been some compatibility issues that we've seen out there. Nevertheless, on the whole, it worked pretty much the same with our experience. Um, the other things to mention about the phone are the Find the Phone feature, which lets you find your phone remotely, and when you actually open a feed, for example, you navigate through everything with the four capacitive panels along the sides, and at the bottom of each element that you navigate through, is an icon to send it to the phone. Once you select that icon, then as you can see there's a little animation that takes place and next time you switch on your phone you'll have access to the last thing you saw on your live view, which is pretty cool. Overall in turn, the interface is hit and miss. Its main issue is the fact that it feels more like a beta a lot of the functionality, even the functionality out of the box didn't work, such as the Facebook support, which was quite annoying. Um, however, there is a lot of potential with the live view, and we look forward to future iterations fixing some of the core issues that we found. To wrap up, the Sony Ericsson live view is a bit more miss than hit. It has some major design issues, and the software's patchy at best. It feels like a beta, but having said that, it still comes in at a very reasonable price of about $70, and it also does the core functions, like tell you what text messages say, and uh, give you call alerts, as well as music control, pretty well. So if these are the main reasons you'd like to get the live view, by all means, go for it. However, if you're looking for a more attractive, potentially, and professional looking Bluetooth watch, you may want to also consider Sony Ericsson's MBW line. Thanks for watching Phone Arena. This has been the video review of the Sony Ericsson Live View. For more on this and other devices, please check out www.phonearena.com.